Hi, I'm Andrew Bell, the curator of Woody Plants here at the Chicago Botanic Garden. My responsibilities include overseeing the development and care of over 200,000 trees and shrubs. We're standing here on the edge of beautiful McDonald Woods here at the Botanic Garden, where trees like the white oak, the American linden, and shagbark hickory have been growing and thriving for decades. But how will they fare in decades to come, especially given the adverse effects of climate change? That's the question that we've been trying to answer. Working with my research assistant, Emily Russell, and other garden staff, we've subjected over 50 trees to various climate models that will predict how they will perform in the decades 2020, 2050, and 2080. This research was funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. The results from this study should help guide us as we plant trees today that will continue to thrive for decades to come, whether that be in a residential garden, in a park, or in the toughest of environments along an urban street. So this is one of the many ash trees in Chicago's urban forest. Ash make up 11% of the entire urban forest in the city of Chicago. And as you can see with this tree, it is um, declining as a result of emerald ash borer, which has been here in Chicago for several years. And really, we are seeing a lot of decline this year in particular. Um, the city has already started removing ash throughout the city and throughout the um, areas surrounding the city and other municipalities. And so this provides a great opportunity for us to plan for the future, how we're going to replace ash and what we're going to replace them with. We're here in the city of Chicago in the Andersonville neighborhood on the north side and we're looking at the Kentucky coffee tree. This is a native species and one that's pretty easy to identify and that it has one of the largest leaves of any native tree in eastern North America. This entire thing is one leaf. We're looking at this tree because it's one of the top performers in the study that we looked at. Um, it's recommended for street tree plantings, which is a very difficult site. You have a very narrow planting location in the tree pit, and it does very well in this location. It will obviously perform well in a residential and park setting. This entire stretch right here is all Kentucky coffee tree, and that brings us back to um, the concept of planting diversity. Um, while this is okay in just one block, we would like to see more diversity planted throughout this block and throughout the city. This is an example of what we really like to see in the urban landscape, diversity. Here we have the swamp white oak, Quercus bicolor, ginkgo or ginkgo biloba, and then the Freeman maple. They all are very tolerant of urban landscape conditions, perform well in the city, and did very well in the study, and we recommend them for planting given their performance up to 2050. The ginkgos will bring brilliant yellow fall color next to the Freeman maple, which has a gorgeous orange-red fall color. The next tree we're going to look at is the common hackberry, Celtus occidentalis. Again, this is one of the species that did very well in the climate change modeling studies that we conducted. This tree does not gain a lot of praise from gardeners and plant enthusiasts because it doesn't have a lot of ornamental characteristics no noteworthy flowers, no great fall color, but what it does bring to the table is its adaptability and performance in the urban landscape. This tree really can tolerate any of the adverse conditions that trees encounter in the urban landscape, and it's going to continue to perform well, well beyond 2050 and possibly into 2080 as the models predicted. Here we have a beautiful specimen of the American linden or basswood, Tilia americana. Unfortunately, this is one of the 10 species from the study that did not perform well. By 2050, this tree will have lost over 50% of its climatic suitability for this area. For that reason, we no longer recommend planting this tree. We're back here at the Botanic Garden on the edge of McDonald Woods, where one of the more common species is the shagbark hickory. Like the American linden, the shagbark hickory is another sad tale in this story. It also loses over 50% of its climatic suitability by 2050, and for that reason, we're no longer recommending this tree for planting. Sweet gum is easy to recognize based on its star-shaped leaves, which take on a beautiful yellow, red, and even burgundy color in the fall. You have a mixture of all these hues of different colors, but also based on its fruit, which is a spiny, round-shaped structure, which is an aggregate of the keens. This is something to be mindful of because some people find the fruit a nuisance. So you might want to look for a fruitless variety which is available in the cultivar Rotunda Loba. Currently, this is the northernmost range for cultivation of sweet gum. 
So if our climate continues to warm as the climate models predict, you would expect this tree to perform better in future decades, and that's exactly what the models predicted. This is the London plane tree, which is a hybrid between our native American sycamore and the oriental sycamore. The London plane tree has been in cultivation for over 200 years. In their study, we used the cultivar Bloodgood because it's so widely planted in urban landscapes. It was one of the top performers in the study. London plane tree has been growing successfully in the Mediterranean region in the south of France, western United States, and in Australia. So we expect that it would perform well in a warming climate such as what we're going to have here in the Chicago region. We're here with one of my all-time favorite trees, the bald cypress, a conifer tree. But unlike its close relatives, the pine and spruce, the bald cypress will drop its needles in the fall and remain naked or bald throughout the winter. Bald cypress grows naturally on bottomlands in the Mississippi River Valley. Despite the conditions of its native ecosystem, it is very adaptable to the urban landscape where it tolerates compacted and dry soils. Given that its native range extends as far south as Louisiana, we suspected that it would perform well in the climate models where temperatures will continue to increase over the decades to come. We hope you found this information useful as you plan and plant for the future. Remember these few important points. Plant diversity. Pick the right tree for your specific site, whether that be a home, residential garden, a schoolyard or park, or along an urban street.